Welcome back to Unsolicited Advice from Toxic Bubblegum. I'm Bubblegum. I'm Toxic. I'm Ben. I'm in this episode. That's true. Today, we're talking about heroes. Specifically, we're talking about Infinity War. Welcome to the Infinity War special. Welcome to Toxic Bubblegum complains and or applauds. Raves about? About Raves? Infinity War? Something like that. Also I'm not a guest. I'm just in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for introducing me, guys. You're welcome. You introduced yourself! <laughs> you gotta, you gotta like, do, that. do a little bit more like, about that. Can't just say my is, name. Your audience doesn't know who I am. This is not our host, Ben, Thank from you. Stupid Export, our partner channel. The one I'm not supposed to say nice things about right. anymore. Oh, yeah, so I'll also even, like, still be saying something mean about Ben <laughs> every when, time any... Only when uh, Bubblegum says something... Uh, Nice about me. That's we'll the see. Only way. <laughs> uh, the other member of Stupid Export is not here. He's at work. Yeah, he's at work doing work things. I referred to him not by name, uh, just to be more difficult. That's just how it is sometimes. We've got a quote. Yes, we do <laughs> have a quote. Um, I think that we all do heroic things, but hero is not a noun, it's a verb. Uh, that's Robert Downey Jr., who you may know from movies such as Infinity War. And also every other Iron Man film and every other movie, Robert Downey Jr. He's a popular actor. Also, big spoilers for Infinity War. Yeah, that's all we're talking about. That's the downside of doing timely things. Is spoiler season is upon us. We can't, like, do spoilers question mark anymore. Yeah, this is... Because usually we're talking about things that are not timely at all. So, spoilers... Yeah, if you haven't watched Infinity War yet, you should probably watch Infinity War right now, and then come back to the episode. Right, like, we'll see you in, like, four hours. Yeah, it's a goddamn long movie. Yeah, so I think that's the first thing. Holy shit, it's so long. <laughs> it is a long movie. There is a lot going on in it. It consistently. doesn't... Consistently. So there's a lot of movies that can really sell you on how short they are that you, like, don't actually notice uh, until you walk out of the and you're like, wow, I didn't even, couldn't even tell. This is not that kind of movie. Right. You're going to walk out and you're going to be like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely sat down for two and a half plus hours if you stayed through all the trailers and all the credits and everything. And it's an MCU thing, so you have to sit through the credits. Right, and let me tell you, <laughs> I didn't need that. Like, I could have used, like, I was excited about Captain Marvel. I was excited about that. I didn't need two more characters to die at In the order end to of be it. Excited about it. <laughs> also, I think, so, obviously, the end credit scene is a setup for Captain Marvel. I think it'd be funny if it cut to Captain Marvel and she was dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> That would have been better. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been just the end. She's already gone. Cuts to her beeper and she's a pile of dust. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, so one thing that I do want to talk about leading into this is that popcorn. MCU... Yes, thank we you. We have popcorn in the room. We from, do have popcorn. When we went to go For see movie special. Infinity War. Um, I do want to talk mm. about... Uh, because this is the 10th year of MCU. Yeah, because that's what it, it was It has been about. outrageously successful. Marvel stood 10 O's. Yeah. Yes, that's funny. They put the ten, ten in, in the studios. studios. Yeah. And I was like, oh. The tens, as it were. Um, Iron Man uh, was, I believe, the first one. Yes. Of, I, the yes, first Iron one of the actual of, Marvel. Of the canonical. And that was um, May 2nd, uh, 2008, I believe. Oh, yes. yeah. So that was like really. So it's like really close to being the 10 year anniversary. So, uh... Our next anniversary movie is Deadpool 2, which I'm excited for. Mm. Where was Deadpool? That's a question I have. Is... You... Uh, like, is... Deadpool's... Deadpool's... Is, to the is in the MCU is or is it a separate MCU? MC, it's a different it's, universe, right? Yeah, mm, it's a, yes. Mm. There's... <laughs> it's really tricky uh, because of all of the lights, the rights and right, licensing. All the, all the, the rights and shit. Um, the canon X-Men universe has canonically accepted Deadpool into that, but it's being run by a different studio <laughs> than who is doing Avengers. Because before the merger with Disney, 
they owned just the X-Men people, which mm -hmm. is why uh, we're not calling Wanda the Scarlet Witch, actually, was because that rights war was still going, going during Age like... of Ultron. So, so. And X-Men had the rights to Scarlet Witch because she was an X-Men. What was the most recent one? Uh, d the last, the last X-Men movie, X-Men movie was Logan, as I recall. Oh, yeah, that movie yeah. did come out. Was That that was a Marvel movie? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then... There was Days of Future Past, and then the one in the middle, and then Logan. And Apocalypse. Age of Apocalypse. That was the middle one, right? Oh, Days yeah. of Future yeah. Past, Age of Apocalypse. Uh, Days of Future Past came out before Apocalypse. Yeah, Days of oh, Future Past, oh. then Apocalypse, then, then right. uh, Logan. I'm sorry, we started with Logan, and I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, we're, going back, we're going somewhere with it. Right. Uh, but yeah, so I think that's why... Deadpool is was it's so funny because it's like they like had this and like everybody died and it's like then like Deadpool doesn't really factor into it because he's probably never gonna be fully over on that side which is sad because I want that uh but then also Ant Man and the Wasp is also coming out this year <laughs> so it's a legit like where does this factor, because Ant-Man does canonically exist in the MCU. Um, what I'm getting, what I am worried about for uh, Deadpool is that it's also going to be a group dynamic, mm -hmm. which is, I wish they would not. <laughs> it's going to be rough, I think. Uh, well, because the first one was so de centered on Deadpool. Uh, which was really refreshing after all of the group stuff right. that we have. Cough, cough, Infinity War. <laughs> oh my god. It's a, a, actually, Infinity War um, has been one of the best I think it, uh, group things because it was approached in a different way, but all of the things leading up to Infinity War where they're like, Ragnarok's gonna be great, but also we've gotta talk about the Hulk. He's here <laughs> to like, talk about Black Widow. <laughs> it's like, mm. like, oh man, that was definitely like a weak part of it. That, that was, was my like, least favorite part of Ragnarok. Oh, absolutely. It was like... Uh, my least part... So, look, can we talk about the Thor movies for a quick second? Yeah, sure. Let's, let's go. go. Did not see Dark World. <laughs> yeah. Uh, barely saw the first movie. Mm -hmm. Saw Ragnarok. Ragnarok's very good. Ragnarok begins with, like, a bunch of characters from Dark World dying. Right? Yeah, that's what happens. That's exactly yeah. also what happens. That's the exact same thing that happens in Infinity War <laughs> yeah. to Thor. Is everything, everyone from Ragnarok dies. And it's <laughs> barely discussed. Oh, yeah. It's like... Like, we meet all these characters, or we, I guess we don't meet all of them. We see several of them, of them. like, we see Korg, we see, uh, what was the Valkyrie's name? I feel like she... Uh, that was my second least favorite part of the movie, because they did a really bad job, um, doing character development for Valkyrie. Yeah. Because I, I don't yeah, remember her name. Dude, I hated her. I've seen it. Ragnarok was so a like of times now and off the wall. I didn't know if I was actually supposed to like try and be like enjoying this movie because it was like the Valkyrie is there and I was like she's terrible. She only <laughs> does like bad things and it's like and now she's the good. She's with the good guys. They're friends. They're having a good time and I was like. She's still, like, really mean and, like, not a good person. We still and don't know her name. Never, like, apologize for anything? I don't... Am I supposed to like this character? And then it's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. she's dead. Immediately in Infinity War. It's like... Maybe. We didn't see her corpse. Uh, we had to assume so. They blew up the ship. Speaking of Infinity War, they did kill off my favorite character in, like, the first five minutes. So, like, that was a rough start for me. Oh, uh, my that whole thing... That was a rough Because the trailer is... uh, made it look like they were going to kill off Iron Man. So I'm like, obviously Iron Man's going to make it. <laughs> oh, that, uh, <laughs> that was in the opposite boat. <laughs> but then it was, like, it was one of those things where it's, like, because uh, when characters are getting killed off, it's almost always my favorite. And it's, like, if Iron Man makes it, they're either going to kill off Doctor Strange or Loki. And then they kill off Loki. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you They kill off Loki in the first five minutes. And then in, like, the last... Not, Doctor Strange would be safe. <laughs> but then in like, the last five minutes, it was like, no, everyone's dead. You like Black Panther? Black Panther is gone. You like fucking anybody? They are gone. So they're all in the safe boat. Uh, so my prediction, where you, so everybody who got dusted is going to come back. Yeah. yeah. That's my prediction. Well, because they have the time zone. I, my, but go ahead. everybody who died otherwise... Is not. Is not coming back. So Loki and Gamora. Loki and Gamora yeah. are gone. Vision's a tough one. I think Vision's gonna come back. Well, yeah, because we have to have awkward romance that no one asked for. <laughs> right, I mean, we definitely... 
keep <laughs> have to having to do it. At least that one's true to the comics, I guess. That's true. Um, isn't that the? Is that is that who Vision's married to in the Vision comic? You in the have, most recent or? Vision comics, no, they've uh, been separated for a long time. Mm-hmm. He's married to another Vision. Oh God! It's great. If you haven't read, uh, was uh, King's Run on the mm-hmm. Vision? So the first issue is the. Yeah, uh, yeah, King Walter Walsh Valer, a little better than a beast, the vision. It's great. It's so good. Like, I can't re- recommend it enough. Oh, no, wait, the first one is, uh, a little worse than a man. That's what it was. And that it's, it's King little... Walter. Good. There's been a lot of good comics coming out recently, as it turns out. I'm too good. And if you want to, for anyone who isn't, like, one of the main. Avengers, who was in Phase 1, if you want character development for them, read the comics. The yeah, MCU's whole thing has been like, you don't have to read the comics. We'll get people in anyway, but if you want... Like, fleshed out? Because since Avengers, we've been so focused on the group dynamic that mm-hmm. if a character wasn't established before then, mm-hmm. it, really... it probably isn't going to happen the best right now. Because uh, Vision, from... What little I have seen of the comics, amazing character. Vision from the movies. Like, yeah, it's he's very bland. I don't. I don't there's nothing much. He showed to up him. at the end of Age of Ultron and was just like a character. Yeah. Uh, and did the like the lifting Thor's hammer bit, and it's like that's fine, whatever. It's it's a thing that was like overstated in the stories, anyways. <laughs> it was always the most annoying thing. There was like Thor is the only one worthy of his hammer, not. <laughs> Literally any other Avenger for right. some reason. Uh, and then he shows up in uh, Civil War, which is... Definitely a movie like, that happened. Uh, he's there for like a brief bit of it and he's like doing a thing. And then like, I feel like we missed like a bunch of stuff. Like I missed the Solo Vision movie that came out. Because he's like like a dude. Oh like a, yeah, he's like such a, a big deal about like the last two years, which I'm glad they gave us a time frame. But what the fuck happened? What? Wait, it was two years? Yeah, because yeah. that's what it did. Like, Shit, I didn't hear the specific time Yeah, because it was like, we've been doing this for like two years. So I guess it would actually be a little over two years, unless they just immediately started there. Like, after Civil War, we're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> this is time. It's like, huh. What's happening? That's a lot. Uh, I do, uh, it's one of those things where, uh, I feel like, because we just, we saw Black Panther recently, because it was the last movie that came out before Yeah, it was MCU. in theaters literally until the week before Infinity War came right. out. Right. And it was just, I love Black Panther so much, but I was like, I feel like if you hadn't seen Black Panther, if you had not seen the solo movie, mm-hmm. absolutely lost. Oh my Absolutely yeah. lost. Because it was like, it was really funny, because it was like, because it had a throwback to the ending, like, the after credit sequence, where they were like, we're gonna open Wakanda to the world and everything, and they had that line in there that's like, when we said we were opening Wakanda to the world, this isn't what I thought. Maybe yeah. a Starbucks. Um, that's what's <laughs> like, really interesting about uh, the cinematic universe for Marvel right now, is it's finally to a point, because for such a long time they prided themselves on, like, instead of ha- Iron Man 2 being the exception, they didn't have, like, Captain America and Captain America 2, they had Captain America the First Soldier and Captain America Winter Soldier. And the whole thing was that you could start anywhere in the series and get a complete movie experience out of it. And Infinity War is where that really starts to turn around. Like, you could not watch Infinity War and have any clue. That was the big, like, there was, like, a sort of debacle in the thing there that was, like, uh, like, movie critics were like, you can't see this movie without seeing the other movies. And that's not a good thing. And people were like, but that's how sequels work. Like, that's how sequels have sort of always worked, and it's just sort of like a... It's like a back and forth. It's Marvel like Marvel did really good making sequels that you could enjoy by themselves for a long time, but if it's... they keep getting more and more dependent on the group dynamic and on the overall arc, there was no way they yeah. could have done it forever. And the downside of them having done that so well is that there are probably going to be people who want to drop in at Infinity War because they've seen... It's the blockbuster. It's a blockbuster. You guys yeah. see Infinity War. Right. And it's like... It's also a thing where it's like, because the Avengers was like the first time they brought all the universe together, but you could watch Avengers without watching any of the other movies. Yeah. Like, easily. It was so easy to just jump in onto it. 
But it's like, there's so, so much going on in Infinity War that's like, I feel like we've always complained. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Infinity War. Oh, yeah. Was, Final like, rating, uh, I would go like 8 out of 10, probably. Yeah, I would say it. I mean, you've seen it a couple more times. I've been saying like a 7, but yeah, like a, I'd rate it highly. It's one of my higher Avengers movies. It was like a legit, like, I mean, I mean, like, we're really tough on movies, like, all the time, and it's like, I have my complaints about it, obviously, because that's what we've been doing for the last 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> I might definitely say it's my favorite Avengers movie. Oh, yeah? I mean, yeah. Are we, if we're talking just Avengers, mm -hmm. where do you guys think it falls? Like, just uh, Avengers, in, Age. Uh, Age of Ultron, and this one. I think, um, in what do you think? Well, first of all, I would almost... I know technically it was Captain America. Oh, I'd the Civil War. Civil War. Yeah, Civil War is in there. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, but it doesn't matter, because it not... would be Infinity War I liked better. Yeah, anyway, I think... I put it... It's really weird, um, and this is something I was kind of talking about when we were uh, discussing doing this podcast. <laughs> I think that um, it's a lot better of a story if you look at the structure from Thanos' point of view, mm -hmm. which was really interesting. And it made me appreciate the movie more than I did the first time that I saw it. My first time, it was like, this was predictable and I knew what was going to happen and I didn't like it. It was two hours of something I could have guessed in like two minutes. Two and a half hours and, and, half and you hours. did guess everything. And I, I guessed pretty much everything. <laughs> and it was like, so that was really disappointing, but it was a really interesting story. I think I do like it more now than I did initially, which I've had the opposite reaction with Avengers. Mm -hmm. I was so impressed walking out of the theater for Avengers. Mm -hmm. But and I don't it's... feel like it's aged as well as... Right. It, well, I'm hoping Infinity War will. It's I, tough. I, I feel like it relied on the gimmicks of the time, which is fine. That's why people were impressed with it walking out of the theater. It might be a thing that the more movies come out, the, we, have, we do this every, like, three years. We're like... Man, this Avengers are actually really good. <laughs> the last one was fine. Yeah. Uh, cause it's just, it's weird. The mo the movies are definitely just like, hey, bam, watch this. This is amazing. It's so cool. And then you sort of sit down and you're like, it's fine. Yeah. So in Infinity War and Avengers would be right up there for me. Um, I do think that Avengers has a little bit of an edge, uh, just because it. I'll revisit it when Infinity War Part 2 comes out. Yeah. Because uh, from looking at the character standpoint, I didn't feel like there was enough resolution to justify how much exposition they had to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's the first half of a story also. It's so. the part that doesn't, uh, that they really sold it. Like, I feel like everywhere I heard it, they were like, it's not a Part 1 and a Part 2 movie. It's like, it's going to be a whole story and then like a whole story. And like you said, it's, it's better when you look at it from Thanos' perspective. There is a beginning, a middle, and an end to the movie. Yeah. But it definitely, like, from the hero's perspective, it just ends. Like, it just there's fucking ends. It's like 90% exposition if you look at it from the hero's point of view. Yeah. Right. There's, like, a whole bunch of setup, and then right when the end of the movie feels like a middle of the movie. Yeah. And it's just like, all right, now we get going. And then it stops. <laughs> and then it's like, <laughs> and oh. like oh boy. <laughs> We gotta have a couple movies in between. I, can we all agree though that Age of Ultron is the worst? Yes, and absolutely. We're just talking yeah, Avengers? no question. Okay. Absolutely. It's, I think it's, it does so many weird things. <laughs> Age of Ultron, Civil War, Avengers, Infinity War. I think. Here's the thing: I liked Civil War, but I feel like had it been an Avengers movie and not a Captain America movie, mm -hmm. it would have been a lot better. Well, because it tried to justify Captain America's point of view so hard when he was really not that right. What really bothered me about that wasn't even because I knew that there were going to be too many people. I knew that they were going to have a lot of stuff going on and uh, just be throwing stuff at you. There was like that weird Spider-Man segment that just kept going. They're like, here's Ant-Man and here's like this guy and this guy. <laughs> let's settle on the, let's land on the Spider-Man moment. Everyone go see Spider-Man Man. Homecoming. <laughs> like, like, oh, Spider-Man's going to be... I'm like, it would have been nice if it had not been a Spider-Man trailer. <laughs> oh, I guess I haven't seen Homecoming. Oh yeah, I haven't I seen Homecoming home either. Shit. Yeah. Oh. I would, oh, yeah, we should go over. We didn't actually... Oh, uh, yeah, we were... So, Cat's we're... seen he's... every... I've seen all of the Marvel movies. All right, so you're sitting with one, you. like, legitimate uh, film critic viewer, <laughs> and I haven't seen Doctor Strange, I haven't seen Spider-Man, I haven't seen Ant-Man, I've seen, like, barely the Thor movies except Ragnarok, I've seen barely the Captain America movies except Civil War, seen all the Iron Man movies, seen Black Panther... Which I had to drag you to. 
I don't like seeing movies. I know you don't like seeing movies. Uh, it was all, it's <laughs> everything I've got to come see, uh, to go see Infinity War, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to see it twice. Because <laughs> uh, I want to see it with all my friends. Because it's, it's that kind of movie. Yeah. Right. It's like, it's a big, exciting movie, and like, if you've got a friend group, that's sort of the ideal way to do it. And so you can have someone to talk about. Yeah. Because it's tough to like, you want to come see like, specifically the new Thor movie, and it's like. <laughs> I'm not actually a huge fan of Thor, and it's like, there's more stuff in it than that, but yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That being said, though, Infinity War feels like several different character movies stacked on top of each other. Like, right, yeah. because there's very clearly, there's Iron Man, there's Thor, there's, what? what's the third group? I feel like there's a third group in there. Iron Man, Thor, the Captain uh, America. Captain America. He didn't show up till like, partway through... I guess the Vision thing. Vision's really the other... I mean, that group. Yeah, that group. Oh, uh, what I was really impressed with was because... Was, um... How seamlessly they melded all of the Avengers with Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes! yes. I was expecting to hate that. I was like, I'm oh my God. not gonna like it. Because because there were so many more Avengers things, and I've been invested in it for the last decade. It was one of those things where... I haven't like, seen Guardians of the Galaxy too. I haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy 2 either. It's on Netflix, you guys! <laughs> I don't watch TV! <laughs> we went through this with Doctor Strange, because it's like... Uh, I'm gonna... I'll watch them there. both. I mean, I don't like the Guardians of the Galaxy that much. It was one of the, like, I enjoyed the first one, I thought it was a fun movie, but I, the, like, the second one came out and I was like, I got no interest in that. That's fair. I almost didn't go see it. I'm glad that I did, because mm -hmm. uh, I think it was good. It was... I've heard good things about it. Predictable, but well-written. Yeah. You know? It's like, been, you know what's coming. Right, it's one of those like, things... Yeah. I mean, it's like reading, like, a shonen manga. You know what's gonna happen, but, like... If the writing's enjoy good... It. Yeah. It's, uh, speaking of uh, predictability, uh, I was real wrong. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, Ben was so, totally wrong about the... Uh, uh, Infinity War. Like you said, I guess it almost should have been obvious. Yeah. If you look at the poster for Infinity War... <laughs> Uh, Iron Man is there in the Jesus pose, so you're like, okay. Uh, and then he begins the movie uh, talking about, like, maybe we have a kid together, huh? And it's like, okay, I know, I got an Infinity War. And the, like, I can definitely see, like, where I was wrong, because it's like, that's too many signals. All those signals are like, yeah, we're not going to do this. We are actually going to... I was like, so Iron Man dies, for sure, that happens in the movie. And then he gets stabbed in the movie, and I was like... Yeah. And then, like, he's the only one that survives. I know. Like, it's him and the robot girl on the plane. Also, real quick, a lot of torture. Yeah, there was so much torture in it! It was, like, a weirdly I, huge amount of torture. What, like, what got me about, because, um, like, the torture was just kind of, because there was a lot of it that was surprising. I was surprised by how, uh, like haunting the image of Nebula being stretched out oh, like that was. Yeah, that yeah. was fucking like, It was kind of a dark thing to have in, <laughs> like, kind like, of, in like, a superhero so, movie. So, because my little sister went to see it, like, the midnight showing with my mom, and, like, I was getting the... There's the scene where, like, Doctor Strange is, like, getting, like, all oh, the needles the, in him. Yeah. And, like, one goes right up to his eye, and I was like, the fuck? The fuck? Uh, and then they do the scene with uh, Nebula, and it's like, she's screaming and stuff. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Christ, I'm yeah. uncomfortable. <laughs> well, this is just ten years younger than I am, the fuck? And it, it was funny, because immediately after, she texted us and was like, you have to go see Infinity War. <laughs> and I was like, that's the Isabel, you good? I guess that's the plus side to a movie being two and a half hours and ending the way it does, mm -hmm. is that once you get to the end, nothing really sticks out about the movie. Yeah. It's hard for something to carry as much weight as the ending did, when it does end like that. Right. It's like if there had been any more neat, like, trying to sew it up, all of a sudden it would be, like, so... It wouldn't mean as much. Yeah. As it turns out. Um. And I also, I really liked... I didn't know Peter Dinklage was going to be in it. I that know! That was just, like, a fun... Yeah. Um, ben, like, I leaned over to me and was like, who is that? And I was like... What the dwarf? The he's the guy that makes the stuff, and he's like, no, who's the actor? I was like, oh, that's Peter Dinklage. Because <laughs> I wow, no, I didn't know Peter Dinklage is here. Because like I didn't see their face, sort of. They got like a lot yeah, of hair and stuff, hair. and I was like, all right, and you don't really like linger on them all that much. I was like, I know who that is. <laughs> My I did like a double take because I was like, oh, that looks kind of like Peter Dinklage, and then he started talking, and I was like, is that Peter Dinklage? <laughs> 
Uh, that whole scene, though, was really fun. I really enjoyed the Forge oh, scene. I just realized this. Now Peter Dinklage is on both sides of the Marvel thing, because he was also an X-Men. Oh my god! Oh, he, he was! He's like the... Not the president, but the... Yeah, the... He was the guy who made the Sentinels? Yeah. Yeah. Peter Dinklage is in everything. <laughs> they have to share Peter Dinklage now. I mean, I don't think we have to worry about hmm. the guy from, like, oh, I guess, what is the plan for the X-Men universe? I have no idea. I don't know if they're, are they like, not done with it for now? I feel like they're done with it for now. Because, like, the Apocalypse movie didn't do well. It did not. It was, because it was, like, Days of Future Past came out and was, like, like very well received. Uh, it was, like, a really solid movie, and then, like, I didn't hear anything about Apocalypse. Oh. Oh, I don't think there was much to... I think it was just, like, they pulled all their tricks with Days of Future Past, and then they sort of... And then, yeah, they were, like, they tried really hard to bank on their, like, um, after Days of Future Past, they're, like, we're getting rid of Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman will no longer be a part of X-Men because he's taking a break. He doesn't want to do it anymore. And then, um... Apocalypse came out, and they're like, special cameo, Hugh Jackman, and it's like, he hasn't been gone long enough for that to be yeah, to like, matter. If he, <laughs> and then they gave to... him another movie! And then, yeah, he got another spin-off. And, and that's, like, like, the last one. This is the last one. Still haven't seen Logan. I haven't uh, seen yeah. it either. I, I haven't... It's good. I I'm gonna... slept through... Well, uh, that, that would be the only Marvel movie I haven't, like, legitimately seen. Okay, but you hate Hugh Jackman. I really don't so, hate Hugh Jackman. So, like... like <laughs> He's a cool dude, you know? Like, I'd be yeah, happy like to a talk person, to him, but, but I don't like, necessarily like his acting. Uh, it really bothered me that they cast him, because Wolverine was, like, my favorite X-Men. Oh, yeah? And <laughs> so then, then he was Hugh Jackman, and it's like, I don't like that. Mm. And then he uh, keeps showing up. As in naked. every, every single movie. Like, he gets his own movies, and then, like, like every single X-Men movie is just... Oh, it's Wolverine. Every X Men movie that comes out, I dislike Hugh Jackman a little bit more. <laughs> it's like, also, torture scenes, as it turns out. Oh, yeah. Because they love doing that with Wolverine. There's the fucking scene in Days of Future Past where, like, uh, Magneto, like, puts a bunch of rebar through him and just, like, drags it through him and, like, sinks him in a lake. And it's like, Jesus Christ! I'm gonna be honest, I haven't seen any of the X Men movies. Uh, I saw, like, all of them except, like, the third one. Except Apocalypse? I no, I, the original ones, the oh, X1, X2, X3. X3. Didn't see X3, barely remember X2. I remember a couple specific scenes out of X1 because everybody remembers yeah. what happens when a toad is struck by lightning. Yeah. It's the same thing that happens at everything else. Wow! <laughs> Writing. <laughs> I really do like that line, like, not even joking, it's one of my favorite lines in cinematography. Favorite lines of cinematography. That's not the correct wording. <laughs> We've gotten off topic. Who's yeah. That, uh, so while we're here, while we're talking about um, heroes, which was the inspiration, if not the theme of this podcast, who's everyone's favorite Avenger? Let's talk about that. Iron Man. Of course. That that seems right. <laughs> I'm gonna be right. uh, not Iron Man. I like Thor. Thor is my favorite. Do you like? Here's the question, though. Do you like Thor or do you like? Uh, the mythology surrounding Thor in the movies. Ooh, if you didn't, yeah, if you didn't know yeah. anything about, if you went in completely blind, you were a fresh formed person, <laughs> a new human being fresh off the assembly line. Yeah, and you walked into Avengers. Mm. Would you still like him as much? Are we talking about, like, first Avengers? Like, the first Avengers If movie? you saw every single Avengers movie, every single... Marvel Cinematic Universe movie I mean, in a line, fresh off the assembly line. You've just been born. I think I'm, you are put in front of a TV screen. This is torture. Eyes held open. This is Clockwork Orange. Yeah, this clockwork is actually orange. torture. I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to be wrong. That was the Ludovico cool. method. Yeah. Yeah, and then you'd watch every single Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, I think movie. I would hate myself first and foremost. I don't. I still think it would be Thor. Yeah. <laughs> I still think it would be Thor. What do you think about uh, Thor's new Infinity War look? He just went back to being regular <laughs> Thor. Like, they took out his eye in the last movie, and then they just gave it back. Like, we're gonna give you this great eye patch for, like, two parts of a Just like your dad. <laughs> and like, now you're done. Because, like, uh, like, a symbolism, or like a... So, I heard a lot of the, uh... 
there was that comment in an interview before Infinity War came out, or like a whole like debacle thing that was like, uh, what's his name? Chris Hemsworth? Yeah, Chris, Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth was talking with the directors and he was like, we really made a good Thor in uh, Ragnarok, I'd like to use more of this Thor, see more of this character in Infinity War, and they were like, don't worry, we know what we're doing. <laughs> And everybody got, like, really worried, and they were like, don't do this. The only thing that, like, happened I, I, that really felt different was that everyone was dead. But then he was, like, took that character and moved him. So it was, like... Which, as it turns out, it's, like... Because it was, like, it was weird, because he was still still being witty, like he was in Ragnarok. Because it was, like, the whole scene with the Guardians of the Galaxy was, like, a whole thing. Uh, and it was, like... You should be sadder. He is sad. He was real, uh... Torn up, they have the whole scene with Rocket in the pod. I feel like that scene almost should have come first. I was going to say, well, how yeah. witty was he being on the ship? Hmm? When he first met them. I don't remember him being all that witty. They were being witty around him. That's the true. Scene That's was probably... very uh, lighthearted. And that's sort of the weirdest thing about the Guardians of the Galaxy in the movie. Mm-hmm. Is that they're still very lighthearted because it's a Marvel movie. But almost too much so. It seemed like a very... I think it's one of those things where it's like they wanted the Guardians of the Galaxy to be kind of the comic relief. But right. it came out as too stark of a contrast. Right, like, because it wasn't... Because when you put a man who has literally just lost in his entire family and his entire lineage and everything else, and then put him with the Guardians of the Galaxy... Although, what you might be able mm. to say about Guardians of the Galaxy is that it was them getting onto that same level of reality that the Avengers were. Because they suffered the greatest loss, arguably. Well, 100%. No, considering uh, that everyone is coming back but, at the end. But that's what I mean, is they had the farthest to fall. Yeah. Because when they started the movie, they were just like, happy fun times, nothing bad ever happens to us, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Let's have, like, jokes about, like... Uh, not respecting each other, and, like, we were just, like, a ragtag group of guys. And then, like, there's the scene that sticks with me is, uh, when they're running at Thanos, Mm -hmm. and, uh, Cole's like, alright, go left. Uh, and then, like, they don't do that, and it's like, ah, it's a joke. And then he has to point the gun at Gamora, and he's like, I told you to go left. I told you to go left. He says it, because the first time, and she's like, now, really? And then the second time he says it, it's like... It's like... God damn. Yeah. What is going on in this movie? And then she dies. Then she literally dies. Well, and then it has the scene afterwards where they're, like, holding Thanos, and, like, Quill realizes that she's dead, and he's like, I had to do it, and he's like, no, you didn't. That was... No, you didn't. Nebula's best moment, also, is the second that she realized oh, that, like, yeah. Gamora didn't come back. Yeah, she's right. like, Gamora didn't come back. It's got the soul stone. Um, not, like... Because uh, I feel bad saying this now that I know you guys uh, haven't seen it. Uh, it's really weird because of the note that they left Guardians of the Galaxy 2 on. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Because uh, it ends at a funeral. And it's like... Jesus it Christ! It's really sad. And it was like one of those moments where it's like... Um, I cried. Do you mind if I spoil Guardians of the Galaxy? Do you mind if we spoil Guardians It's Is it Yandu? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. They ended at... And again, it was really predictable because like right at the beginning of the movie, uh, Yandu's talking and he's uh, to one of the other Ravagers and they're like, we will never have Ravager colors over like when you die. And yeah. it's like, so Yandu's gonna die this movie. Gotcha. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like, 15 minutes in. But the funeral, um, he gives, like, a nice speech about his, like, how Yandu was, like, his real dad. And the Ravagers show up c- to fly the Ravager colors anyway over his funeral. And it's, like, a nice moment. But it was, like, it was really tear-jerking. And you're like, Guard- you know, this is how they're gonna get Guardians of the Galaxy onto that serious level before Infinity War. And then they were still, like, the comic relief. <laughs> and it's... Like, and it's that part of it that made me so, like, that felt so off about it. Because when it got serious, it just felt almost disingenuine. Yeah. So Because there, there's the part where he's pointing the gun at her, and it's like, bit, considering everything that's happened up to here, it just felt so weird. And then there's the part where Quill is, like, uh, attacking us, and it, like, it, like, it upset me, because it's just, it's so goddamn starkly different. Than the entire rest of them in the movie. Yeah. It was like we didn't see anything like. There was no semblance of them having that sense of reality that they should have had 
if that's the note that the last movie ended on. Um, one thing, it's a little, it's off topic, but I want to talk about world building thing really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was so great, uh, cause the Avengers are Earth's mightiest heroes, and Quill comes in and he's introducing himself, and he doesn't know that he's from Earth, because oh in God. space they call it Terra. Oh, yeah. So he's a Terran, and it's just, I thought it was like a really interesting thing, cause at first it was like, he should know, and then it was like, oh. Yeah, they, they don't, don't call actually. It Earth. And it was I'm like from a nice Missouri! Little, that's on Earth! There was a nice <laughs> callback to the fact that... That they Quill, had set it up like that? Like, even though he is from Earth, he doesn't know it. Yeah. Like, he doesn't... He's not in touch with what's going on there. And it was like a nice... I liked that. Yeah. There's also... There's a lot of really funny scenes, because if, if nothing else, that's what Marvel movies are really good at, is a lot of, like, light-hearted, funny scenes to offshoot things, and it's just, like, it's a great touch that I always uh, enjoy about them, but it's tough to balance. Yeah. yeah. When you're, like, you can only have so much of a roller coaster before you start getting whiplash. I think it's one of those things where, for the comedy, because they had to have some lighthearted moments, but I think they tried to have too many to outweigh how dark the movie was when they didn't need to do as many, because in context... A little would have gone a long way. I feel like we talked about this when we were talking about like horror movies or something like that. It's the darker something is, the less you need, the less y you need comic relief because the comic, the comic relief, relief you have, you have goes. goes yeah, it's a long gonna way. be enough, and it's it's gonna I it keeps setting you up and then dropping you back down. It's one of those things. I feel like this is a me and Ben have this grievance with Disney movies all the time, is because the Disney movies follow a formula. And this isn't, like, Marvel movies, or, I mean, they sort of do. But, like, specifically the animated movies is because they have a lot of build-up, and like, and then they always have the low point. There's always a drop, every time. And I never need to see it. Um, one thing... It's like... <sighs> like, also with the structure... I do think that one of the reasons why uh, they melded as well as they did uh, was because even though it had, like, the writing of a typical Avengers movie, uh, they used the formula of a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, it was a subtle thing, but they used, like, the same sort of things that they had done to get us used to looking at different worlds. Yeah. Right, they... Oh, yeah, you're right, they did do that. Yeah. They had, like, the planet text and everything. The, and the, and everything. The, I do like the... Yeah, they did, like, the uh, text for the world at different location, and then the planets and stuff. It was cool. It was nice. It was. So they were definitely following... Uh, I The MCU movies, I do think, also follow a structure. It's a little bit more open-ended than, like, a Disney Right, movie. it's more <laughs> different than, like, an animated Disney movie. I'm trying to remember... Oh, it was because uh, we talked about this after we went to see The Cat Returns. Oh, uh, yeah. Because it was just, like... Obviously, this isn't the same, because that's, like, a children's movie. I don't mean, but it didn't have the depressing part. It didn't, It yeah. didn't have that low point that Disney movies always have. It was just like, oh, no, that's pretty bad. But, I mean, like, I never felt, like, bad. I was like, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine, though. And it was, like, it was something interesting, because uh, that's just, like, a whole other structure thing, right. I guess. But it was... Definitely interesting. Because it didn't follow any kind of... Like, the main plot tied together, but it also didn't have, like, subplots that tied together. Like, if the... Like, the thing with the tower, they're, like, running up the stairs and the guards, like, come out of the door and you're like, oh no, they're not gonna make it to the top. And then the stairs immediately collapse just where the guards are, and you're like... It's like, okay! <laughs> and they just scoot around it, and it's like... It's one of those things that, uh... I feel like independent studios more, like, Ghibli don't follow a structure as often. Miyazaki's movies don't generally follow a structure when you that's have, predictable. When you don't have, like, with the Marvel things, with Disney movies all the time, it they have, like, so many executives who are trying to be like, this is a formula that works, we're gonna make money if we do it this way. Yeah. And the writers are not given enough creativity to... They right. don't have enough room to do. It's the part that uh, sticks out to me because a lot of my favorite Disney and uh, movies sort of don't follow the same plot. Yeah. That they've got sort of like, they've got like, they've got their lows still because every movie, every Disney movie does it. But yeah. they like, there's like a more of a roller coaster in the beginning. Mm -hmm. That it's like, wow, there's a lot like going on here and I'm not just like waiting for the drop. Uh, but it's like, you can almost argue that like, 
so uh, all Marvel movies have the same sort of formula too. You just it's more open ended and hard to see, and you can almost still see that in uh, Infinity War if you're viewing it as part one of two. Yeah. Because sort of uh, all Marvel movies have that same they have the same drop. Uh, sometimes there's just like more drops, uh, or they're longer drops, but. We would have just gotten to the drop by the time the movie ends. Yeah. Like, this is the part where the heroes, like, suit back up, get all their best stuff going, and, like, really come at it. It's, like, the part where, uh, the end of the airport fight in Civil War, uh, where War Machine goes down, and then they're like, all right, now we're getting to the real fight. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to, because I haven't seen a bunch of these, uh, so Ragnarok's got, uh, build up to it, too. There's like, uh, all right, so we're definitely like escaping the place, but we're building up to the actual real fight that comes up on Ragnarok, or on Asgard. Iron Man three has the whole like getting through, like the getting a suit back together and putting all the pieces back together, building up to the real fight with the Mandarin. Yeah, there's a Mandarin in Iron Man three. I know. I mean, I know who the enemy was. Uh, What was his? Oh god, I should know his name. I can't remember his name. He was like the executive guy or whatever. Um, he was glowing in orange. That was actually kind of... I know a lot of people had issues with Iron Man 3. Uh, I also had some issues with Iron Man 3. I'm not going to say it was, like, perfect, but it was something... It's one of the main reasons why I stayed invested in Phase 2 as much as I did, because Mm -hmm. uh, even though it was still formulaic, it was... They spent so much of the movie dealing with the fact that Tony had PTSD. That's one of the things that uh, is real great about it is that they linger a lot on characterization. Yeah. Because we've gotten two movies of like, here's how cool Iron Man suits can be. They can be very cool. (laughs) And then Iron Man 3 is like, and here's Tony Stark doing his thing. Yeah. Like, here's a lot of him doing his thing. And it builds up to cool Iron Man suit stuff. But even with the Iron Man suit stuff going, it's still Tony Stark. Right. Because he's like jumping between suits and everything. I think that's one of the things that I like about Phase 2. Uh, Iron Man, is that it's a lot more of Tony Stark. Like, it's not Iron Man, it's Tony. That's also something that I liked about the beginning of Civil War, Mm -hmm. was that it was a lot more Tony than Iron Man. And that's the same way, Ragnarok is almost the same way. Yeah, it's it's a lot less Thor. Yeah, it's a lot more Thor as a character and less Thor as a hero. Right, and it was like, because it's like, it has the the opening scene of Ragnarok where he's in Suter's lair and like, he's like hanging there and like fucking around and I was like where's this Thor been all my life where have you been yeah uh uh it's something that I it's one of the main reasons why I would have liked to see some of the other characters Mm -hmm. uh get movies before we got this far into Avengers I really would have liked a Black Widow movie I at a point it's too late now it's such a shame everything for one Everything they've point, done for Black so Widow is... Yeah. She survived the movie? Yeah, she Although, survived. the main Avengers, like the main five. Yes. They did. did it. Yeah, that makes sense. But Clint's under house arrest, so forget about him. Um, Already done. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. oh, yeah, let's talk about that for a quick second. They make a one-off comment uh, in the beginning of Infinity War, and they're like, and it's like, what about Hawkeye uh, and Ant-Man? And it's like... Oh, uh, they're under house arrest. Something about their family or whatever, and it's like... What? <laughs> this is like, huh? Huh? I had a lot of questions about that, because it's like, were... Were they under house arrest by their family because their family didn't like them fighting, or were they under legitimate house arrest because of the Sokovia Accord battle? It's like, that we've completely forgotten about, what except is- for... Except that, for the, like, like one other comment, like Rhodey, like, what happened there? Um, it was, was like I can just send the executives away with this cool button because they're project. Like, it they're is. Being projected. There was. Uh, it is just sort of a surreal thing. It's like arrest them, and it's like, are you fucking stupid? <laughs> you. You saw the goddamn spaceship in the sky. What's our plan? We literally. You don't have a plan. <laughs> we never see any like any of that ever again. There's no like government stuff that shows up. We could have used a Hawkeye. <laughs> We could, at any point, maybe somebody just literally put an arrow through Thanos' skull, like... Right? <laughs> at any point? I do really like the idea, though, that Hawkeye's, like, at home with his wife, and there's, like, a big alien in the sky, and she's like, you're under house arrest, mister. <laughs> <laughs> you're not... It's, I'm the greatest good you'll ever get. <laughs> this is fucking... Uh, God where's damn, my super suit? Where's my suit? 
Silver suit. Also, it, the funniest thing is that it's like, all right, so Hawkeye's out of commission forever because nobody cares. Fine. We're never getting a Hawkeye movie again. No one's going to lose sleep over it. I mean, it's getting a movie. Yeah. Yeah. That was <laughs> it's like... getting another movie. So it's so funny because like, and I checked it. I was like, how many of the movies would like actively fall into this, like into canon before we get Miss Marvel, before we get Infinity War 2? Because they're going to have to deal with this, right? There's going to be ramifications. This, everybody's going to be gone. Yeah. Ant-Man versus the Wasp, everyone's going to be gone. <laughs> Uh, he's gonna be like, don't. Wasp is like, I'm gonna take over the world, and Evan's like, we are in a lot of mourning right now. Half the world is dead. Uh, it's literally an apocalypse out there. What are you doing? I'm, I'm a bee. I would give <laughs> everything I have if Ant the sequel to Ant Man was just him being under house arrest. <laughs> God, he doesn't know what half the population died. He's because he's a little. He's an ant. He can do the whole fight in his house, and the wasp is there too. They can be small. <laughs> And the news is, like, playing in the background, and they land on the remote, and it's like, it's chaos out here. It's a goddamn pandemonium. The Half the world is dead. Our hospitals are all shut down. We need something to happen here. And then, like, he gets a toy train, and he's like, right? And he's like, whoa! It's like a full-size train! That would be, that would be my favorite Avengers movie. That would be how I got invested in Ant-Man. Hawkeye is there, he's like, whoa. I'm under house arrest in the same house. I think I'm... I think Ben should write movies, <laughs> as it turns out. I would love to. Uh, Mr. Marvel, uh, are you guys there? I would love to write Ant-Man vs. The Wasp. <laughs> I know you already have it written, and every movie until 2025 20, written. I love a shot. <laughs> listen, I just think you should listen to me here. Underhouse, alright. Uh, okay, so who's everyone? Uh, back to the heroes. Oh, yeah. Other than the main five. Who's everyone's favorite? Black Panther. That's fair. I. That's good. It's tough. Uh, so I I saw Black Panther's movie and Black Panther's great, but they and I didn't see Spider Man. I didn't see Doctor Strange. Uh, but like just seeing them all in the movie, I was like, these characters are good. Yeah. I liked Doctor Strange a lot more than I thought I would. Yeah, I, I was thought... surprised because uh, I didn't think I think one of the weakest moments of Doctor Strange as a movie was that they didn't quite capture uh his personality uh it was sort of in flux you didn't know like what kind of a guy he was yeah and it's so, i was really worried about seeing him in infinity war because of that because it's like if they couldn't do it in a solo movie they can't do it in yeah. infinity war but, but they, they did, did. It, they did it really well like i was like oh and I guess that's the thing, when you're not the driving force in a movie, and you're just, when you have a billion side characters, you can be like, here's the best of this character, and the best of this character, and the best of this character. Yeah. I do like how quickly they're amping up Spider-Man's, like, arsenal and oh, suit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Spider-Man suit was really cool. At first, I was really not thrilled with it. It's mm -hmm. like, this is going to drastically uh, change Spider-Man, which, you know, I guess if they're going to be making more Spider-Man movies isn't the worst thing. Because yeah. we've seen the same things over and over in yeah. Spider-Man movies. But it's like, um, I was really worried about it. And then it's like, it's kind of a bold decision, though. Because if he is in this universe, he knows Tony Stark. Like, yeah. right, it makes sense that they'd... That would happen. Cause yeah, because they're both... I mean, they're both tech geniuses. So, like, I think it's really playing out that Peter is learning. I was going to say, you saw stuff. Homecoming, right? Yeah. How smart do they make Peter? He's pretty smart. Does Is it... Uh, I There's the consistent debate. Uh, does he create the webbing, or does he actually, like, it, invent the webbing? He... What? Oh, he creates it. Like, it comes out of his wrists? Yeah. Okay. Because that's, that's sort of the going one, is, like, when he invents it... It's really leaning more on like this is how smart this kid is, and when he creates it, it's just like he's like a kid. It's a kid movie. It's a kid hero movie. Yeah, I think it's one of the. Um, yeah, that's an interesting. I. It's but, something that I really like uh, because even though I was really against when they started doing more Spider Mans, just did, generally. Did you guys both see the Amazing Spider Man movies? I saw the second. No, it's amazing. I saw the second Amazing Spider Man. I never oh, saw, the saw the first one. I saw the first. I, I, didn't didn't the second. I was gonna say, do you remember which one he does in that he one? Cre he invents it. In he that does one. invent it in that one. Yes. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He's because they go more for the. It's so weird in it because they like really go for like yeah he's like a techie nerdy kind of guy but he's like 
skateboarding and like really he's like so cool, cool. he's it's so like, like aggressively cool it, it's one of the uh, andrew garfield is my least favorite spider-man mm-hmm. and it was because of stuff like that like he looks cool he's always right. doing cool stuff and it's like even just the way he was played was very confident and it's that's not what I want my Peter Parker to be. Honestly. It was like one of my. It's like oh god, I miss the spectacular Spider Man so much because it was just the this best the Spider Man I've ever seen. It was just so good. Do you guys ever watch? Uh, was it Invincible? What What was the Iron Man show on? I think it's Invisible Iron Invisible, Man. Yeah. Yeah. I did not. It was a good one. It was like it was. Sort of this, it was like a reverse premise. It was like, uh, we're in Tony Stark as the teenager instead of, uh, it was Tony Stark as a teenager and it tells the whole story from that perspective. And I think it was really good. It's one of my favorite, like, Mandarin I've ever seen. I, I saw, like, uh, the beginning of it. I've been wanting to go back. I would, I mean, I maybe should. I haven't probably. seen it in a long time. I can't, like, judge it now as a TV show, but, like, I remember it being really good. There was also some parts of it that I were like, they put Modoc in that. Uh, oh, that's terrifying. and the Modok is terrifying. Oh. Like so often, Modok is like literally a joke. Like he's so often a joke in like everything he shows up in. So when I saw him that, I was like, "The fuck!" <laughs> oh god! Like, do you guys want like a sure. spoiler of a scene oh, for yeah. it? Go ahead. He looks at the Iron Man suit and he lists off like he's like Tony Stark, and he lists off like a bunch of different things about him. And it's just like Jesus Christ. <laughs> Like, uh, it's just, like, so terrifying, because, like, no, he doesn't, he's a secret identity in that one, it's not, like, normal Iron Man, where he's like, hey, I'm Tony Stark, look at me, billionaire, close the mask, I'm doing that stuff. It's a secret identity, so when Murdoch shows up and looks at him and lists off, like, everything about him, it's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, here's a question, what's everyone's favorite, uh, Marvel show? Uh, like, as a serious show? Uh, Spectacular Spider-Man. This down, down, hands down my favorite. Love it. Everything. I have a special space in my heart for Superhero Squad. Because it was so fucking stupid. What a show. What a legitimate TV show. What a, like, fucking show it was. I have, like, my sister for my birthday once got me a teddy bear and made it a little Doctor Doom outfit like the one in the show. So I have a little Doomsy bear. But I was like, that was, I was like, we watched it. It was like so stupid. It was so dumb. But it was like, it was really sort of what more turned me on to Marvel. Because I was like, that's so weird. I don't think I've ever heard of anyone being like, Superhero Squad is why I like this. It was, oh man, it was just surreal. Like I remember like seeing episodes of it and I was like, this is a TV show? Who is this for? Wolverine was one of the main characters in it. Like, it was like... I forgot about that. Oh, God. There was, like, a... Not... There was, like, a character that came up with just four superhero squad. Like, he was, like, a dinosaur kid. That was his whole shtick. He was, like, dinosaur stuff. And it was like, this isn't... The fuck... There's, like, a billion characters in Marvel, right? We didn't need to make one up. You know, There's literally Beast Boy! I probably... Exists. Yeah. Sorry, that's DC. No, that is DC. I probably could have gone through my whole life without ever thinking about this show again. Do it, man! I'm running back! <laughs> Unfortunately, we have my actually, history of shitty media... We haven't actually had a full conversation about, like, Infinity War. We've, like... <laughs> I, we bring up a part, and then we get on a tangent. We bring up a part, get on a tangent, bring up a part, get on a tangent. That's how it works. That's how it works. I was going to say, yeah, it's probably the Iron Man show or the Spectator like Spider-Man. Both of those were really good. There was like a, a period where it was like a bunch of sweet stuff. It's like, uh, the Marvel animated stuff is always so good. Mm. Oh, uh, actually, okay, never mind. Sorry, I was thinking about DC again. Uh, stop. <laughs> I need to stop that. Uh, Marvel either has really bad animated stuff, or it's over the top. It's... Over the moon good. Yeah, it's, like, very good. Because uh, sometimes it's Spectacular Spider-Man, and sometimes it's whatever the new Spider-Man show that they came out with immediately after it is. Bad. It's not Spectacular Spider-Man. Bunch or of Blue just, Jays. Did one of them run in the window? Is that what I heard? It's close. Or Agents of Smash. What? What? You guys haven't heard of Agents of Smash? No! It's the Four Hulk TV show. <laughs> it's Green Hulk and Red Hulk and Grey Hulk and She-Hulk. Oh, so it's like okay, a Four Swords Adventure, I'm, but the Hulk. But the Hulk, and it's like wacky and it's a goofy and it's like a joke show. Like <laughs> yeah, the show like, is made as a goof. <laughs> we hope <laughs> people spend money on that. So 
Red Hulk uses guns and stuff. I, I know all these Hulks, like, actually canonically exist. I didn't know Grey Hulk actually existed. Yeah. Red Hulk I had heard about. She-Hulk I obviously had heard about. Not sure about Green Hulk, though. You guys ever heard of him? Mm, that sounds suspicious. Mm. Not real. What yeah, about yours? Like oh, um... Jessica Jones. I like Jessica Jones. Mm. Oh, that's that's right. so that's the... We're not just talking about... Oh, so, yeah, we also haven't seen any of the Netflix stuff. I've seen the... a little bit of Luke Cage. Watch Jessica Jones. The first seasons of Jessica Jones, and everyone's gonna be so mad at me for saying this. I shouldn't do it, but I'm going, to. going to. The first season of How Jessica fucking Jones... How fucking dare you? <laughs> oh, sorry. You had I, uh, I liked Luke more, arguably. How fucking dare than you? Than I did in Luke Cage. <laughs> uh... I did like that they got into his uh, character more, but he's just one of those... He's such a fascinating character mm -hmm. anyway that it's one of those things where it's like seeing him on Jessica Jones, it made him kind of, like, mysterious. And I... It, they went an interesting way with it. And then Luke Cage came out, and they're like, this is literally everything that's happening mm -hmm. with Luke Cage. And it's like... Mm. So it's, you've seen all of it? Have you seen everything? Uh, yes. Cat watches... Daredevil? Yes. Uh... Daredevil, Jessica Jones, uh, Iron Cage. Fist? Yes. Luke Cage? Uh, I haven't seen... The only one I haven't seen yet is Defenders. Yeah, I was gonna ask if you'd seen Defenders and everything. Uh, and it's just because I haven't gotten around to it yet. The MTU. Yeah. The Marvel <laughs> televised universe. Cat's too busy watching every other piece of media in existence. Well. MMU? <laughs> Marvel Netflix universe? <laughs> yeah. Not uh, quite cinematic. Where right. the fuck were those assholes? Is that canon? Is it canon to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or is it still, like, a different thing? I think it's yeah, a different it has thing. has to be a different thing. That's, it's really interesting, because uh, they keep... they made There was such a big confusion around whether or not Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was canon to the MCU. Right, yeah. And did you watch was, that like, one, by the way? I did. God damn. <laughs> you really fucking just watched everything. I really, yeah. Listen, Where there's... Where do you find the time? Uh, I have insomnia. Right, yeah. So, also, she's a writer, <laughs> so she works at things. home. <laughs> Good. Um... She has cats set on her a lot. I write while I'm watching all the different Marvel shows. Um, it's all just fan fiction. So it's like, I also assumed that the other TV shows would also be in that not quite canon hypothetical area. Uh, Jessica Jones this last season has made a lot of references to like Captain America. Mm -hmm. huh. And they like, they keep making um, references to things that happened in the first Avengers movie. Oh, like the invasion. Yeah. Huh. So it's like, that makes it seem like it's canon, but then also, like... We cut back to a season two. They're dead. And it's... <laughs> Everyone's gone. They've all been dusted. <laughs> it's like, um... Because I know it exists in the same universe as Luke Cage, because there was all the tie-in. Um, I'm pretty sure Luke Cage exists in the same universe as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., because uh, I feel like that was something that they talked about when it was released. But then, if Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a canon... I don't know why they keep referencing Avengers. Yeah. It's really weird. Um, hmm. They're like... Because a lot of people don't like the people... Um, the... I can't think of what the... The specials? People who've been, like, oh, experimented on. Enhanced. The, enhanced, yeah. For... But they have, like, a bunch of them running around and everyone's discriminating against them because they blame... the Because there's, like... After the alien invasion that they've referred to. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh. it, that was a thing they did, like, in the immediate beginning of Age of Ultron. Yeah. Uh, Captain America referred refer to him as, like, we got too enhanced or whatever the word is. As if, like, that word... I mean, like, I know what the word means and I can put it together. But it was just, like, surreal to have heard it like we knew what the fuck he was talking about. Yeah. And it, it's also really weird. Uh, Agent Coulson is just, like... What is happening there? <laughs> no fucking no. Is Agent Agents of Shield is concurrent, or is, that's in the past, right? It's in the past. Yes. Oh, is Agent Coulson a show? No, it is Agents of Shield. It's and he's Agents in the show. Shield. He's in the show. Yeah. But the way that he like the way that Joss Whedon explained it when Agents of Shield started was that it was different. Was that it wasn't on the same timeline? Oh. Huh. So weird. Because, like, everyone was like, does this mean... Because he died. Yeah. Like, does this mean yes. he's back? And he's like, it's in, like, a different universe that's happened, which is why... I don't know if there's been any, like, official statements on whether or not it is since then, but that's where I got the impression that it did happen on a different thing. So it was like, uh, just because he's on the show doesn't mean that he's going to be back for Avengers, which he hasn't been. Which is good. I think that's a good decision they made. 
I mean, they, not if a they fan. brought him back, I thought he was a great character. Love right. him. But it's like, if they did that to me with him after they'd already done it with Bucky, I would just... Yeah. <laughs> like, this is too much. <laughs> oh, yeah, speaking of, we were talking about that in the car a little bit. Uh, you guys had some brief thoughts on that one. I was like, I haven't seen Winter Soldier, so I don't like... I don't know if I'm supposed to like Bucky, and you guys were sort of vehemently, <laughs> like, don't worry about it. You're not supposed to. <laughs> no, you... Here's the thing. You are supposed to like Bucky, but, like... I mean, that's the thing that Marvel movies sort of always get me on, is, like, it. Marvel wants me to like these characters, but doesn't want to actually, like, make me like them. Here's it's, the... It's, like, one of the things... It's, like, uh, I think they did really well in Black Panther. Uh, it's because uh, Killmonger is a villain, obviously. Yes. Uh, and it's, like, they do a real good job of making him, like, an enjoyable villain... But without resorting to, like, the... Because, like, you sympathize with him. Like, you're, like... You understand the why and the... Right, and it's, like, he's, like, like seen with his, like, his father after he gets buried and everything. And it's, like, it's really good. But at the end of the day, you're, like, no! You, obviously, obviously this isn't the side I'm on. And it's, like, with Bucky, it's, like, I mean, like, I get it. It's, like, the brainwashing thing, and it's, like, multi-layered and shit like that. And it's, like... God! It's rough. I feel like a lot of people liked... I was really surprised, uh, because there was so much fan material for Bucky after Winter Soldier, and I did not get the impression that there should have been. Well, like, on my way out of the theater, I just didn't like him, and then he was such a big fan favorite, and it's like, that's, I don't So like that's him. the thing that got me, was that I assumed that at the end of, like, Winter Soldier, everybody really liked him. So I, that's what I was just like, Winter Soldier, like, did a great job of, like, Getting the character and everything, and I was like, "Oh, huh. how does sorry, how does uh Civil War start? Oh, they do, they do like sort of break the mind control on him, right? Like that's how it's a little bit at the end of Winter Soldier, and then it actually happens in Civil War. That yeah. was what, yeah, yeah, because I forgot that that's how it happens. Yeah, because Steve is like, I have to save Bucky because he's not mind controlled anymore, and it's like all that. Oh, he didn't kill." Those people, and he didn't kill Chaw's dad, Black Panther's dad, or he did kill him. Which one happened? Oh man! I mean, in I, it's time for the Civil War trivia power hour, Cat. I hope oh, to watch your. Uh, <laughs> my first question is: Did in Civil War did Bucky kill Black Panther's father, or was it the Russian guy? I think it was the Russian guy. I was it. What? Cause I feel like. By the time he died, I need Bucky to, was already on the lamb. And maybe I uh, should have rewatched Civil War. Um, Civil War is like one of the only ones I haven't seen. Civil War and Ant Man are like the only two like big MCU. I'll believe you if you say it was the Russian. Guy. I'm gonna say it was the Russian. I think guy. you are wrong. <laughs> oh. I'm pretty sure. Like I'm almost 100 percent confident that. The plot of the movie was that the Russian guy figured out Bucky's uh, words, mm -hmm. the words to uh, activate him, his, yeah. kill, his kill words. Oh, he the, his trigger words. I feel like there's a different word for when you like... I mean, it's like the his sleeper activation. agent. Sleeper agent, yeah. Uh, the sleeper agent, yes. But yeah, I feel like, so a lot of the plot is him getting to him, telling him those words, uh, Bucky goes and does a thing, and then like they captured him. And then the Russian guy was there, and he was like, and told him the words, and Bucky was like, God damn it! And then Bucky went on a tear through the fucking place, uh, and the world was just finally like, we need to, like, put him in jail, or something. Uh, one thing that really, I think it could have been really interesting if they'd had a better way to utilize it, is because at the end of Winter Soldier, you really didn't know if he was gonna get better or not, and then yeah. Civil War, like, we saw that he was a little bit better, but then there's such a big gap, and then he's just, like, fine. He's been working and out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's been working out in the fields. And I it's guess. like, I, it's an interesting... Also, why didn't they give him his arm back sooner? Why couldn't they like, give him an arm sooner? Because you just gotta learn to live without it. It's part of the... It's, he's, he was doing... He was out in the fields, like, just working the whole time. Yeah. He wanted to, like, forget as much of it as possible, you know what I mean? That's fair. To, like, move on. Uh... We're sort of pushing our time limit now at this point. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I suppose to order a pizza didn't do that. Uh, I guess I should. I could do that like immediately. Uh, I could do that right now while we're still talking. Yeah. So what I wanted to say, there's a comment uh, Rocket Raccoon makes 
there's the joke about the eye, and he was like, oh, that's funny before. Uh, and then, like, uh, Bucky lifts him up, and they, like, both shoot their guns in opposite directions. It's like, well, that's kind of cool. Uh, and then Rocket Raccoon is like, how much for the arm? Or like, I'll get that arm. Which is, like, funny and, like, a callback. But if the arm doesn't do anything, it's just an arm. All, he's, all Rocket Raccoon saw was him lifting up with it. God, I can lift you up with a normal arm, too. You're smaller, you're a raccoon. It's not hard. Anybody can lift a raccoon. Why do you need an arm? That does a lift a raccoon. Because he also, he steals body parts. Yeah, that's not that it. I mean, I know the joke, but it's just the arm. Uh, it is, we don't actually see any of the cool stuff that the arm does in that movie. We just give him an arm as if it's like a, like a big deal. Like, oh, it's your arm. And then he shoots a gun, like just a normal gun with it. And it's just like. Yeah, it's fucking like. Watch this guy, but... They, like, give him a fucking, like, they're in Wakanda, like the most technologically advanced country on the ship. They give him a semi-automatic to fight with. It's like. No, it's a full automatic. They give him... But it's just a gun. It's a just gun! A, not, they, it's not even a uh, fancy so, gun. So, uh, Bucky and Falcon both have, like, normal guns to fight all these dudes, and it's like, oh, we're in Wakanda, we're in Wakanda, right? We got, like, laser guns and, like, fucking holographic and, like, projections and shit. We can't give them one of these things. War Machine's got a lot of guns, several guns, so that's fine. That's acceptable. We could have given them, them something else to work with, probably. It's one of those things, like, uh, those... People who brought their own weapon to that fight, it's a little bit more understandable. But yeah, if they armed him on the gun, then they definitely should have given him a laser spear or whatever Anything, those things are called really. that they were like. Where did they even get that gun? Was that like his gun? Why would Wakanda, does Wakanda have like normal guns? I don't think they do. I don't know where they got that. <laughs> they have one, apparently. <laughs> they have one for Bucky. He brought it here. He had it in his back pocket. <laughs> It was in the hand. <laughs> like, like, oh. It was gripping it. They couldn't make him let it go. You guys keep talking. I'm going to order a pizza. Let's go order a pizza. So, so is that our I, uh, end of our media segment? Or, yeah, I guess uh, the one, like, do you have any wrap-up notes? Or I liked it. More? I thought it was good. Uh, I feel like it... I had strength in how little we went into some of the characters. Like, because like you were saying with, like, Luke Cage, like, when a character's mysterious, mm -hmm. that adds more intrigue to them. That make, It makes them more interesting and lingers with you. Um, and while a full-on character examination can be fun, sometimes you don't need it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's probably what I like most about the characters in it, is we really didn't get... Too in depth when we didn't need to. Um, that's good. I one last off topic thing about Luke Cage because uh, yeah. I did complain about it. I think I actually I only really like Luke Cage. Mm -hmm. Um, it's probably my second favorite of the shows, but you can't compare it to like the other Marvel shows mm -hmm. because it's a lot. It's paced so much slower. It's which is very like, different. I like that they took a step away from the very fast paced things that they had been doing. Um, it paid off really well in terms of character, but it's just, if you look at all of the other action things that are happening, Luke Cage develops very slowly in comparison. Right, you can't, like, you can't go into it expecting the Marvel experience. Yeah. Trademark. Um, but yeah, Infinity War, I thought, was really interesting. I wish that it had come out before we did our villains episode. Uh, yeah, because Thanos, Thanos would have been a great was villain. a really good example of he's doing these things because he believes he is right. He's, he's doing dummy. these things to he's save an idiot. people. He is an idiot. <laughs> it's the what's the there's a term for that type of villain, but I can't remember what it is right now. Uh, it's the, my favorite ongoing meme is that he's like, we don't have enough resources. I gotta kill half the population to save the world. Make more resources. <laughs> There's fucking the, uh, <laughs> the Thor Thanos conversation that's like on Tumblr. It's like, I gotta kill half the population to, uh, spread out all the resources. And Thor is sitting there with Starbucks. Hey, couldn't you just make more resources? And it's like, Thanos is blocked. I <laughs> <laughs> It's something I wish that they would have gotten into a little bit more, because it's something that not only do I think they could have explained, but it would have made it more interesting if they had gotten into, like, the concept of the exact, matter. Yeah, the exact, uh, exactly what would entail. Because uh, I feel like there's, like, a, like a counter-argument. You'd be like, how long? Yeah. How 
how many resources could I make that could possibly sustain things forever? And it's like, all right, so now you can think about it. But no one was ever going to, like, have that conversation with Thanos. Nobody in the film. Even, like, as a wacky, like, side goof. What, what would you think would have happened if one person had just, like, sat down and talked to Thanos about math? <laughs> like, if Tony Stark had just sat there and be like... This is all the resources you need. This is how many. This is how you would spread them. Up. This is how we would distribute them. Like, like I'm your uh, <laughs> financial analysis analyst. Instead, he just got a bunch of people calling him his dad instead. When that was, that's unfortunate for the internet to know. I think. Uh, uh, I did like seeing. Just moving on. <laughs> I did like seeing Baby Gamora. Anyways. <laughs> Baby Gamora was very cute. That was so. That was that was a good scene. That was a really good scene. It was fucked up, but it was good. Uh, I watched a video just the other day uh, about what it took to get Zoe Saldana into the like Gamora getup. Yeah, and it's like I am. I was impressed. <laughs> I imagine it's a lot. Because it's one of the... I hadn't really noticed uh, how intricate her design was. Because, mm-hmm. like, I mean, you look at her and you can tell that she's Zoe Saldana. But it just, like... There were a lot of little details that I didn't catch about, like, uh, her facial structure. Right. Like, there's a bunch of, like, little things. It's, like, really subtle. But so. it took... Uh, the thing was that it took, like, five hours every day Jesus. of shooting. And it's like, I wonder how that went... With the kid. Yeah. <laughs> that was the most confusing thing at the very beginning. I saw, like, a like a set shot, uh, and it was, like, her sitting next to, like, the child version, and I was like, the fuck happened in Guardians of the Galaxy 2? That didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. No, it didn't happen. That didn't, didn't happen. happen. It would have been interesting. <laughs> it would have been... Oof. That was a really powerful uh, moment in the movie, though, uh, when you realize... Because you don't know that it's a flashback when they open on the scene and you think he's, like, still just killing people. Oh, yeah. And then, like, realizing it was Gamora as a child. No, I was gonna say, that scene was almost, like, it was almost, like, too much? Like, mm-hmm. it hit it all of a sudden and I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> there's, like, there's very little actual setup for it. You go from, like, any other... I, do you go from, like, a Gamora scene into that? Don't no. Remember. Yeah, I don't think you, don't. you do. You go from you're like a. From the, you're on the ship, right? They're on the. Uh, are, yeah, ship. it might be like Iron Man Company, and then you see that, and it's just like. Because it, it's. Again, you get like. Because everything else flows, you're expecting a sort of pattern at this point. You're like, we're going to see Thanos doing some shit, or we're going to see like a Thor, or like a Captain America, or like an Iron Man, one of these groups. And then you see that, and it's just like, what? Okay. All right. Okay, we got it. Like, uh oh. I'm glad, it's one of those things, like, I kind of wish they'd done stuff differently, but at the same time, I, it would have been so confusing if they had. It would have been interesting to see a few more things in a different timeline. Yeah. Uh, so that didn't stand out as much. And it also would have done, it would have, it would have, like, really reflected the idea that Thanos at this point can alter reality as we know it. Yeah. And it would have been, like, a fun psychological thing. It would have pushed the runtime to ridiculous limits. That's true. Yeah. I was guessing, because we saw that scene, and then we saw that, it was before, uh, they find him on the, they find him as he gets the reality stone. Yeah. Because you gotta see the dagger, and then you do the dagger thing. But overall, good movie. Good, good movie. I liked it. If you haven't seen it, uh, I'm sorry we spoiled <laughs> the entire goddamn so thing. <laughs> Go see it, it's good, it's fine. Get some friends together to talk about it at the water cooler. Um, feel like there is like, or maybe wait until part two comes out. That way you can watch it as a whole seven hour experience. And fucking I wonder goddamn, if they'll, they're gonna do the double feature for that, right? They oh, have they to. have to probably. I wonder if they're gonna call it Infinity War Part Two. Doubt it. That's what it's been being, like, that's how people are referring to it, but... They haven't released a title, and I mean, like, they didn't put part one in Infinity War, but so which they don't, they don't generally do. So that's right. what I mean, that's gonna be the real question. So Captain Marvel is the movie that comes immediately after this. Is it gonna get fixed in Captain Marvel? There's no way. That's... 
too big oh, no. to fix in a solo movie. So what's going to happen in that movie, then? Who knows? She's gonna, it's... I assume what has to happen is the timeline is going to be before... It's going to be running concurrent. Oh, yeah, maybe. That's true. It seems like a weird one, though, to come immediately before it, though. Yeah. But it's like... Because they send her the distress signal. Cause, so I imagine it's not going to be her... I figured that'll be the end of Captain Marvel. Oh, her answering it. it. Yeah, that's fair. Or, like, the end credits scene or whatever. What if they did fix it, though? <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> like all the movie? part two comes out, and no one has to do anything. No, it's They're a, just <laughs> eating swarm on the whole movie. I would take movie. a two-hour movie of them all hanging out and having a good time. Yeah. I'm ready for that also, motherfucking just, beach episode. As a, just as a total thing, Tony Stark is a shell of a man at this point. Yeah, oh, honestly. Oh, yeah. Like, everything always happens to him. Consistently. Everything he gets taken away from him. Uh, yeah. Um, I really wish that we had seen what was going on with Pepper. Yeah. Did Pepper die? Yeah, Did that's... What, if, oh my... If we come back to Earth and Pepper is gone, Tony Stark is straight up going to kill himself. What if... Okay, what if that was just how part two started? Like, he goes and he's like, uh, I need help. The fate of the universe rests on my hands. And, like, he's talking to her and, like, the chair spins around and she's, she's not, not there. there. I would, like a pile of That'd be dust. so bad. Like, because in, uh, in Avengers, he's the one who takes the bomb into space and comes back and he's, like, got PTSD over that. Uh, and then we cut to Iron Man 3. Which, like, nothing particularly, like, terrible happens to him, except there's, like, a weird bit at the end where, like, Hulk was asleep the whole time, and it's just, like, weird. weird yeah, that was, like, this on. that's, like, not, like, a, not, that's not. Like a not joke. That's, like, a not joke. And then Civil War comes out, and he realizes that, well, number one, he gets, like, attacked by this guy uh, who kills a bunch of people, namely his parents, uh, and Civil War fucking kills me so bad because it's a Captain America movie, so he has to be right. The opening to goddamn uh, Civil War is like Iron Man's like, I'm trying to make the world a better place. Here's like the Tony Stark fun for like a bunch of colleges and you all get scholarships. And then the scene comes out and she's like, my son is dead because of you. Because of you! And then Captain America like blows up a building and he's like, I'm still in the right. I have to do this. And they're like, no, well, you just, you gotta do rules. And he was like, you're wrong. <laughs> this guy killed your family. Here's a video. And then I was like, I gotta fight him. And he's like, you're wrong. You turned into John Mulaney. Damn. Uh, and then it's like, that's a fucked up thing to have happened to him. Cut off all, like, all of his friends. And then it cuts to this movie. And he's like, I'm getting back together. Like me and Pepper, like in a good relationship. And, oh, things are happening. I'm Spider-Man's here. Oh, I gotta take oh, Spider-Man. Everyone is dead. I'm on the planet alone. My suit is, like, destroyed. I got stabbed. It's just me and a blue robot person. <laughs> I'm 400 billion miles away from Earth. I watched everybody die. Uh, I held Peter in my arms as he faded from this reality and told me he was scared. Okay, that, by the way, uh, the I don't want to go thing is the same line that makes me cry every time I watch Doctor Who. And oh, I was, no, I was yeah, expecting the... to cry over Doctor Who and fucking Infinity War. I'm watching, I'm, I'm watching Infinity I... War, but in my heart I'm watching Doctor Who. It, it was like, it was one of those things, I was so invested in the thing, but he said I don't want to go, and I saw David Tennant. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he like, phased out of this reality. Oh. Uh, yeah, but they give... Tony, rough time. It's always bad things <laughs> for him. Everything goes fine for like other characters. Maybe they die. That's the best thing that could happen to his character at this point is he dies. But they won't let that happen. They won't let, happen. They won't let him die. Every movie, every movie he's been in since Avengers, it's just been like a shit time. Yeah, that would be. Because I know, oh, at one point Robert Downey Jr. wanted to leave. Yeah. And it's like, I wonder if that's still, he could sacrifice himself, maybe, at the end of Infinity War 2. Infinity War 2. Yeah. That'd be, so and then. Maybe bad stuff doesn't happen. Then uh, <laughs> you see it like, then I was right the whole time. Yeah, you were right. Because then it you watch the entire uh, movie and you're like, at the beginning, and then it's like, oh, it's smoking gun in the middle. Maybe, oh, he doesn't die. And then he does die at the end. I would put my chips down. Tony Stark oh. dies at the end of the next Avengers. Nice. That would make Let's me really find sad. Let's find out. Yeah. yeah, I'd be sad also. But, like, 
It would be good right Maybe now. Maybe it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's time to let him go. <laughs> I I don't think about it that often, but it really is every single movie. Yeah. It's, uh... And I keep... I am... Like, in closing thoughts, I say this every time, I'm getting less invested in the... In, the cinematic experience that Marvel is giving me. Um, I almost didn't go see Black Panther, actually. Mm-hmm. It was like, because I have to draw the line somewhere. I have to... I can say that I'm going to cut myself off, but I haven't yet. Yeah. And I, but it's then been ten years. The reviews were so good <laughs> that it's like, okay. And then I wasn't going to miss Infinity War. Yeah. Um, but it's like... You should probably see Captain Marvel, I guess. So maybe I gotta see Infinity War too. I mean, if they killed off Iron Man... That would I'd be stop. a stopping point. Like, you could finally be It would be a good resolution... Uh, but I wouldn't care also if Iron Man left. Yeah. Like, It'd be like, that's fine, I can be done. Um, I also, just in things that are impressive, in fun Infinity War facts, it broke so many records. Oh, yeah. I'm very proud. Uh, it was, at 250 million, it was the highest... Uh, opening weekend at the box office. Hey! It beat out Force Awakens, which held that previously, and then in international releases, it beat Fate of the Furious huh. for 630... Right? Is that Something right? Like that. $630? Yeah, $630. Damn, exactly. only a couple ticket sales. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> no one liked Fate of the Furious. <laughs> Why was it Fate of the Furious?! <laughs> I don't know, that was, uh, I don't, I wish I remembered, uh, like, what the exact number was on how much Fate of the Furious made, but it was, like, the world record release hmm. opening weekend. Well, I mean, I guess Until Infinity War. I mean, people like fast cars and explosions, so, like, I can't fault them for that. Is that the one where he dies? Is Fate of the Furious the one where he dies? I mean, it's, like, the last one, quote-unquote, until the next I last can. one. I I know. You've been following. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sit through... Any of the Fast and Furious. Movies. I don't blame you. I just remember hearing about like the song and everybody was like legitimately sad about it, and I was like, I guess people do like watch yeah. these movies. I remember. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, you remember. You heard yeah, about okay. It. They did the video. Yeah, yeah. The music video. And the... That's sad. It's a sad song. I remember the only like I haven't watched any of the Fast and the Furious. I mean, like I did, but I didn't watch them. I feel like I went to go see like. A Fast and the Furious movie that was not a Fast and the Furious movie. It was called Red. It was like Red 2. I saw like the sequel. I didn't see the first one. Someone offered to take me, so I went. Uh, but it was like... I was like, that was a good movie, actually. It was Fast Cars and Explosions. It's like, it, it makes for a cool good. movie. I mean, it's like a cool movie-going experience. That's one of the reasons I wanted to see Infinity War. It's just it's a good experience. It's a good movie experience. There's a lot of movies that it's like, oh, I'll watch it one day. And it's like, yeah, but if you don't see it in theaters, you're never quite going to get the same experience. Yeah. Right. It's not, we're not in a time where, unlike with, like, the VHS period, where, like, with horror movies, like, Aliens, I think it was, like, people, like, enjoyed it more mm-hmm. watching it on VHS because it was, like, scarier because it didn't VHS have as high quality. VHS is a scary medium. It's true. Everyone's scared of VHS. <sighs> They're foreign and unknown. Um, but no, because... We put pictures in a box? <laughs> That's a devil's magic. <laughs> okay, we've reverted Ben. <laughs> uh, we need to end this episode here. Um, but yeah, like... Infinity War, we liked it. It's a good, it is a good movie-going experience. I think you can get more invested watching it with a group of people. Yeah. It's... That's a great title of the episode, is Infinity War, colon, we liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be it. Because the rest of the time, we were just complain about it when we weren't explicitly <laughs> saying please we liked it. Uh, but I mean like that's how you know you liked a thing. Yeah. Is when you can pick it apart and you're like I, there was this scene and this scene and this scene and this scene and this scene. Then and it was like this scene felt like it could have been done better. And the only reason you think that is because like you want You want it to be perfect. Yeah. You can pick it apart and if you still want to see it after that. Right. Like, oh, because that's the thing we're gonna see tonight. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna see it tonight with the uh, other So that's a so. great this with the going. other my, uh, with the other stupid export person who we will not will continue to not name because right okay. and then maybe one time you can actually have us on as guests maybe yes. instead of just being in my house <laughs> yeah it's the easiest place and then to I record can, I'm talking into the recording thing anyways I've been your host Ben <laughs> wait a second hold on uh, this has been right. Cookies and Milk episode no that's wrong this has been unsolicited advice. I'm your host, Bubblegum. I'm a uh, genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. 
Tony Stark. I'm Ben. I'm toxic, actually. Oh! No, no I'm toxic. High five! <laughs> nice. That is one of the funniest yeah. things, is that Tony Stark consistently gets, like, very good, like, funny lines. Like, this guy's a wisecracking, fun, having good time. And then you analyze, and you're like, the fuck? Let this guy have a break. He's coping! <laughs> and on that, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Say bye. Bye.